Let's now evaluate the meaning of that V. Well, if I have a here x and here y, and I pick just a function, it could be a sine, it could be a cosine, I pick one that is way more imaginative. I pick this one. That's my function. It has to be single valued, though. You have to be careful. It must be single valued. You cannot go back. That's my function. And so that's my function f at time t equals zero. Let us take for v always a positive number for simplicity. I'm going to call it even speed. Speed is always positive, right? And I want to know now if I look a little later in time when there is a minus sign here, what that function looks like. So at t equals zero, I gave it to you. What would it look like a little bit later in time if there is a minus sign there? Any suggestions? The function has shifted in what direction? Use your hands. Who thinks it's in this direction? Who thinks it's in this direction? Very good, it's in this direction. So you will see, a little later in time, you will see it here. And what is it doing? It is moving with speed v in that direction. Now we're going to evaluate the plus sign. What will happen if we now look at the function a little, less, a little later in time, a little later in time, it has moved in this direction and it's moving with speed v in this direction. So now you can look through the meaning of this equation. You now understand why when I wiggled here, why the string had no choice. It must propagate that function that I generated and it must propagate that with the speed square root of t divided by mu. We derived the speed of propagation for that string. Mu is the mass per unit length. T is the tension. Uh, if I ask you, is it obvious that the higher tension gives you a higher speed? Maybe. Is it completely obvious to me? Sort of, not quite, but yeah, I accept that. Is it obvious if I make mu large, that I make it a very thick, very heavy per meter, that the propagation speed is lower? Yeah, maybe. Now that I know the answer, I would say, yeah, it's quite obvious. But it's not so <laughs> trivial. So in any case, we have derived two things. We have derived that there is such a thing as a speed, but we even have derived the speed itself, the square root of t over mu. So if we had done the experiment again with a higher tension, then the poles would have moved faster. But now, there is something else that we have to explain. Why on earth is a mountain coming back as a valley and why is a valley coming back as a mountain? And that now is the result of boundary conditions. Some people who have lectured 803 make a very simple statement. They say 803 is only about two things, this equation and boundary conditions, and all the rest follows. Quite accurate. So we have here the string that Nicole and I were holding. And here is the end. That's where Nicole was. I hope I spelled that correctly. And we know that that end must stay fixed, cannot move. I'll put the, the line a little lower. I'll put it here. This is the end. And my pulse came in. This is the pulse. And let us evaluate the moment in time that this part of the pulse reaches Nicole. You ready for that? So this part 
here. And the part that, yeah, maybe it's in heaven, is here. I have to make this a little steeper to make it look alike. Make it a little steeper. And this, yeah, who knows what happens with that. But Nicole knew very well that this point cannot move. Therefore, she very sneakily, without telling you and me, generated a pulse that came back to me, which made sure that at all moments in time, this point stood still. So at this very moment in time, she must have generated the pulse, which had this displacement, so that this part is exactly the same as this, and so that her hand stands still. But she must have done that at every moment in time. She must have done that when this part arrived, when this part arrived, when this part arrived, when that part arrived. So that means she must have generated a pulse on her side that is a valley that now looks like this. So this part is here. And at this moment in time, she is, all she has to do is generate this pulse. And so the net result is that if you took a photograph of this string at this moment in time, you would see something very bizarre. It is the, the sum of this with this. And you try to draw what that looks like. For one thing, this point will be here. That's for sure. And then whatever you're going to see here, well, you try to add the two up. And this thing is moving in my direction with speed v because she is generating a valley. And so the consequence of the boundary condition is, since this point is fixed, a mountain must come back as a valley, and a valley must come back as a mountain, and given a little bit of time, when this point here has passed Nicole completely, then there is, of course, a very nice healthy pulse on the way back to me, which is mirrored now this way. A mountain is a valley but it also has mirrored this way. That's why I made the pulse purposely asymmetric. And so that is what is happening. 